Let's continue our study of convergent and divergent series using the integral test. So again, I am going to strongly encourage you every new video and continue to update this uh, little table I've created. I'm going to strongly encourage you to continue to update this as you learn the new test. So we've learned already the geometric series test and the nth term test. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the integral test. So after this video, you should be able to fill in that third row. The integral test basically says that if you have a function that's positive, continuous, and decreasing, and yes, you have to check all of those, for x is greater than or equal to 1, and we can think about our series as a function, or the sequence as a function, so each value of the sequence being defined by some function, then both the series and the integral from 1 to infinity either both converge or both diverge. So before I can even think about using the integral test, I need to check, is it positive, is it continuous, and is it decreasing? So for positive, remember that I'm going to think about f of x as being this function. So f of x is going to be 2 over 3n plus 5. And the question says, is f of x positive? Well, 2 over, oops, that should be an x. I'm sorry about that. 2 over 3x plus 5 for x is greater than or equal to 1 tells me that this guy will always be positive because it's a 2. And assuming that x is greater than or equal to 1, this is going to be minimum of 3 plus 5, which is also positive. And if I have a positive over a positive, then my result is positive. So f of x is greater than 0 or positive. So that condition is met. Is it continuous? Well, if I think about where a rational function is discontinuous, I know that 3x plus 5 cannot be 0. So 3x cannot be negative 5, so x cannot be negative 5 thirds, but we already know that x is going to be greater than or equal to 1, and so therefore it's continuous. So continuous for x is greater than or equal to 1. So far so good. The last one is that I have to show that it's decreasing. And to show that it's decreasing, again, the easiest way is to find the derivative of the function. So if I take f prime of x, and remember f of x is 2 over 3x minus 5, or 2 times 3x plus 5 to the negative first. Using the power rule, the derivative of that is negative 2 times 3x plus 5 to the negative 2 times the derivative of 3x plus 5, which is 3. So f prime of x is negative 6 over 3x plus 5 squared. Doing the exact same thing I did on my first condition, the guy on top is always negative because it's negative 6. The guy on the bottom, 3x plus 5, quantity squared, is always positive. And if I take a negative divided by a positive, that value is always negative. So this is less than zero, and therefore this is decreasing. Since f prime of x is less than zero. So I have to check all of those conditions, and then I say, since f of x is positive, continuous, and decreasing, I can use the integral test. Now, what does the integral test say? The integral test says that both of these guys are going to have the same convergence or divergence. So that means I'm going to use the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x or 2 over 3x plus 5 dx. And I'm going to determine 
if that converges or diverges. So let's, let's go with it. U is going to be 3x plus 5, so du is going to be 3dx. So I can think about this integral as, again, moving this 2 to the outside, keeping in mind that I'm going to need a 3 up here. I'm going to have a 1 third out here. So I have 1 third times the integral, I'm sorry, 2 thirds times the integral of 3dx over 3x plus 5, and therefore my result is 2 thirds, and then remember this is just u to the negative 1, and therefore my integral is the natural log of the absolute value of u, or the natural log of 3x plus 5, from 1 to infinity. So from 1 to infinity, again, I'm going to take infinity. I've got 2 thirds natural log of what is essentially infinity minus 2 thirds times the natural log of 8. Now, 2 thirds times the natural log of 8 doesn't mean anything in terms of the big scheme of things because I need to think about what does the natural log function look like? And it looks something like this. And as x approaches infinity, the natural log approaches infinity. So this is infinity. What does that mean? That means that the integral diverges, and I don't have enough room to write the sentence I would normally write, but you should have plenty of room to write. and says, because the integral diverges using the integral test, and of course you would have all of this stuff to show me that the integral test is okay to use, but because the integral diverges using the integral test, then the summation diverges. Now one thing I want to point out before we move forward is if you get that the integral converges, the integral test will not tell you what it converges to. So it's only going to tell us whether it converges or diverges, but it's not going to tell us the value to which the integral converges to. Let's take a look at another example. We were to use the integral test to determine the convergence or divergence of the series. The summation as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n. So again, we need to check one, is this positive? So we're going to think of f of x as one over two to the x. So is that a positive function? Well, remember that x is going to go um, be greater than or equal to one, essentially. So one over two and one over two squared is one over four and one over two to the third is one over eight. And so this is positive for sure. So f of x is greater than 0. 2, is this continuous? Well, the only time that it's not going to be continuous is if 2 to the x was equal to 0, which is not going to happen where x is greater than or equal to 1. So again, f of x is continuous. For 3, 3 is decreasing. And we already sort of took a look at some of the initial values, but we should take a look at f prime of x. f prime of x for f of x is equal to essentially 2 to the negative x would be negative natural log of 2, 2 to the negative x. And if I'm looking at that for values where x is greater than or equal to 1, remember 2 to the negative x is just 1 over 2 to the x. And so this value is going to be positive. Natural log, positive, negative, says I have a negative times a positive times a positive. That result is negative. So f prime of x is always going to be less than zero. It's always going to be negative for x is greater than or equal to one. So because all of those conditions are met, I can use the integral test. 
So since all conditions met, I can use the integral test. So now what do I have to do? Well, now the integral test says this is going to converge or diverge in the same way that the integral from 1 to infinity of that function, so 1 over 2 to the x dx, converges or diverges. So if I integrate that, I'm going to get negative 1 over the natural log of 2 times 2 to the x from 1 to infinity. And again, if you don't remember all of these rules that turns 1 over 2 to the x into negative 1 over the natural log of 2 times 2 to the x, that's okay. Just go back to your list that you had from Calculus 1 or Google to find a great informational sheet that has the derivatives and integrals that we use most often and you will find this pattern. So it's, if you don't have it memorized, don't beat yourself up, that's just fine. So again, I'm going to think about this. If I'm plugging in infinity and one, I'm going to get negative one times the natural log of two, and then two essentially to the infinity. And then I'm going to subtract negative one times the natural log of two times two to the first. Well, two to the infinity is zero. I'm sorry, is a very large number, excuse me. Two to the infinity is a very large number and negative one divided by a very large number is zero. So this is essentially zero minus negative or zero plus one over the natural log of two times two and so this result is one over the natural log of two, or two times the natural log of two, is the way that we would write that. Now, what does that mean? That means that because this integral converges to a value, that means that this series, so my series, the summation as n goes from one to infinity of one over two to the n converges by the integral test. Now what's very important to understand is that this summation does not converge to one over two times the natural log of two. That's not what this rule is saying. The integral test says, hey, I can help you determine if it converges or diverges, but I can't tell you what it's going to converge to. So we would have to have some other method to figure out what it converges to. Because this question doesn't ask for that, we're going to be done just by saying, yes, it converges by the integral test, but again, it does not converge to the same thing that the integral um, results in. Up next, we're going to take a look at the P-series.